like to show you the uh, Mycin system uh, in some detail today. Mycin is a program that was developed over a decade ago here at Stanford University, but uh, the machines on which it was designed to run are beginning to disappear, and we thought it would be wise to uh, capture its performance on a videotape before we uh, fail to have any machine on which it will operate. Uh, what I'd like to do is simply tell you about a case, and then we'll run the case through the system. I'll try to demonstrate several of the features of the old Mycin program at that time. Uh, you will quickly realize that this is uh, primarily of historical interest. The world of computing has changed a great deal in the past 10 or 15 years, and the kind of uh, scrolling, totally text uh, interaction that Mycin was developed to take advantage of uh, is, uh, in retrospect, uh, seems somewhat uh, uh, outmoded and, and com complicated compared to what we can do today with graphics and, and the newer modes of interaction. <coughs> uh, so the thing to remember is that at the time that Mycin was developed, the world of artificial intelligence was largely based on large mainframe computers that ran LISP in uh, time-shared environments. And uh, we'll be running uh, Mycin today on a uh, Digital Equipment Corporation uh, Model 2060 computer. Uh, that has uh, been here at Stanford since the early 1980s. Uh, Mycin itself was developed on a DEC-10 computer uh, during the 1970s. The case I'm going to uh, use for the demonstration today is one of 10 cases that was used in the evaluation of um, Mycin that was published in the Journal of the American Medical Association in late 1979. The uh, study was performed uh, 1977 and 1978, and uh, as you'll see, uh, the case uh, dates back to 1975. We selected uh, cases uh, pretty much at random from a set of cases of meningitis that were cared for at our local county hospital, the Santa Clara Valley Medical Center. So let me tell you a bit about the case, and then we'll run her, her, uh, her statistics through the system. She came to the hospital on June 3rd, 1975, complaining that she had a headache for about a week. This was the first known hospital admission for, for the woman. She was 42 years old. She was a Mexican-American female. Uh, on May 25th, approximately uh, seven to 10 days earlier, she had begun to note the onset of uh, myalgias, severe headache, uh, nausea, some neck pain, and uh, shaking chills that came on sporadically. She went to see her private physician for these problems, and he told her that she had a bad migraine headache, and he described he prescribed for her Belargal, which is a brand name that's a, a medication, which is a combination of belladonna alkaloids and phenobarbital and ergotamine. And he also gave her Deprol, which is a combination of uh, mepobamate uh, and uh, benacitazine. Well, in spite of these medications, uh, her symptoms worsened over the next week, and finally on June 3rd, uh, she came to the emergency room at our county hospital and was subsequently admitted. She denied any photophobia, any diplopia, or any other neurological symptoms. She had noted a recent non-productive cough, but uh, she denied any hemoptysis. She had also noted episodes of pleuritic chest pain on the left side. Uh, as for her past medical history, it was really uh, a remarkably normal. Uh, she had no allergies. Uh, she uh, was on no medications except for these ones that had been given her the previous week by her uh, local physician. Uh, she had no medical illnesses that uh, were known. And she had no exposures uh, that were known to either meningococcal disease or tuberculosis or other infectious diseases. Uh, her social history is important. Uh, possibly because she, although she had never lived in the San Joaquin Valley, uh, she had traveled to Mexico in 1974, uh, the previous year. On physical examination, she did appear quite ill. Uh, she weighed 51.3 kilograms. Her blood pressure was 120 over 90, and her pulse was 88. Her respiration is 24, and she had a fever with a temperature of 100. Skin had no abnormalities, no rash at all. Um, her head, eyes, ears, uh, nose, and throat really were normal. Uh, no abnormalities could be noted, including on neurologic exam of the extraocular uh, uh, muscles and the cranial nerves. 
Uh, her neck was uh, somewhat stiff to examination, uh, and uh, she did complain of some tenderness there. Her back showed, it showed some left-sided costovertebral angle tenderness, but her lungs were clear on examination. Uh, cardiac exam showed a grade 1 over 6 systolic ejection murmur. She did have an S4. Uh, and on neurologic exam, she was noted to be confused, uh, although she was uh, uh, alert. The remainder of the neurologic exam was really unremarkable. It was just this it was basic confusion. Now let me tell you about her cerebral spinal fluid. She, of course, had a lumbar puncture under the circumstances. Uh, I cannot tell you what the opening pressure was, but the protein was 265 milligrams per cent, glucose 17 milligrams per cent, uh, with a serum glucose of 124. She had 810 white cells in the CSF uh, with a differential that showed eight polys and 91 lymphs and three monos. Gram stain was negative, the ink was negative, and an AFB smear was negative. Her peripheral CBC showed a white count of 11,200 with 76 polys, 8 bands, 4 lymphocytes, and 11 monocytes. Her hematocrit was 41%. Her sed rate was 24. She had a BUN of 15. Her creatinine is not known. Uh, electrolytes were remarkable only uh, for a sodium of 129 uh, and a bicarbonate that was slightly low at 19. Her uh, SMA12 panel was normal. Her cardiogram was normal. Her chest x-ray was remarkable because she had some pleural thickening in the apices of both lung fields. Um, there, were, there was a moderately sized patchy density in the lingula, uh, but the lungs were otherwise clear. And the radiologist's uh, impression was that she had a pneumonitis that would involve the lingula on the left side. Although despite uh, several uh, efforts, she was unable to uh, cough up anything that could be uh, cultured or looked at under the microscope. She had a uh, normal skull film, no CAT scan was done. Uh, she had sinus films that showed slight clouding of the left maxillary antrum. Blood cultures were drawn, uh, but of course were pending at the time decisions had to be made about treatment and admission. Uh, sputum cultures could not be done because she was unable to bring anything up, and they finally did a transtracheal aspiration, uh, but no polys or organisms were seen on that gram stain. She had a urinalysis, which was really So that's the story. The question was, given a patient like this who had those cerebral spinal fluid findings, what would be the proper management? Should she be admitted to the hospital or should be treated with antibiotics? And if so, which, which uh, drug should be administered? And this is the setting in which a program like MICE was designed to uh, assist. So we'll turn over to the program now, we'll get it started, uh, and I'll take you through this, this particular case. Okay, I've started up the program. Uh, that's what the top line on the screen shows. You'll see this is the last version that we ever created in Mycin, dating back to August of 1984, although I should emphasize that the knowledge base in Mycin was never changed uh, beyond about 1979, so everything that it knows is 1970s knowledge of infectious diseases. Uh, the system asked if uh, any of the available are needed, and in fact there is one, and that is we better pretend that it's 1975, uh, so I'll ask the system to allow me to enter a fake date essentially resetting the internal clock. Uh, I don't need uh, other instructions, but I'll show you the kind of instructions uh, that a user would get. It points out that uh, you should answer the following questions, terminating each response by hitting the return key. To correct typing errors, you use the delete key to delete single characters, control W to delete a word, and so forth. These are standard conventions. Um, it points out that uh, you can change an answer to a previous question two ways. First, uh, if a program is waiting for a response, you can enter the word change and you can go back and actually change the answer to an earlier question. Uh, and it's also possible to change answers at any time uh, using a uh, special fix convention, which I won't go into in any detail right now. Also, if you don't know the answer to a question, you simply say unknown and the system will do the best it can without that information. Uh, it gives you a, an example uh, at the bottom of the screen here of uh, the kind of questions that it asks and the way and the options you have to, for responding. You'll notice that a question mark can be entered if you'd like to see some samples of uh, the appropriate uh, responses. And here's a summary of the basic uh, things that you can do when it's asking you a question. Enter a question mark. 
to get a rephrasing of a question, a double question mark to get a listing of all recognized responses to a question, you can change an answer, there are special debugging modes, you can ask for special explanations, um, you can get help, you can ask how a conclusion was reached, you can enter a question answering mode, you can restart a consultation, you can review everything that you know about a case, you can ask what the current decision rule is and have it be printed out for you, you can save the case for future reference, uh, you can uh, use special tracing to uh, see when rules are being invoked and which ones are actually uh, firing at any given time. And perhaps the most commonly used of the special uh, options is the word why, which allows you to request a defense of a specific question in a way, an explanation of why it's a pertinent question to ask at that time. Second time and say it in June 3rd, 1975. And then it's about 11 in the morning. The system will ask for the patient's name. She's a 42 year old woman. Uh, she's Mexican American, but Mexican is not recognized as a race. And I should have said Latino, you'll notice that the system helped me know how to answer a question such as that. It asks if there are any uh, positive cultures uh, about which the system should know, but of course uh, you've heard the uh, description of the case and no culture results were available yet, so we have to say no. But there are several pending cultures, or at least there are the uh, CSF cultures, so we'll say yes, we do have a pending culture taken from the cerebral spinal fluid. <clears throat> it was taken just about an hour ago, so that's uh, on the 3rd of June, 1975, at about 10 a.m. And the smear was, of course, uh, looked at under the microscope. But as we described, no organisms were seen on the smear uh, when it was uh, observed. No gram stain was negative. Notice now that in all these cases, Meissen is asking a question, waiting for the physician using the program to respond, numbering the question so that if you wanted to go back and change a question, you'd use the change command and insert the number of the question uh, that we had changed. Any other pending cultures? Well, not really. We were unable to get anything to culture from the sputum of this patient, so we'll say no. Have there been any negative cultures that have come back? Not to our knowledge. As far as we know, this is the first time any cultures have been obtained. Now it asks if we suspect that uh, this patient may have an infection at the site from which we've not obtained good culture specimens, and of course there's this question of an infiltrate on her lung, so we'll have to say yes about that. It looks like she might have a pneumonitis. Say possibly in the lung, the system points out this could be ambiguous. Do we mean that she's coughing up sputum, or do we mean that an x-ray or a physical exam Sputum. The infection that we uh, suspect, well, what infections might we enter? A pneumonia, bronchitis, a lung abscess, an empyema, clearly a pneumonia is most likely. You notice uh, that I purposely misspelled pneumonia here, and any time uh, that you make simple typos like that, Meissen is smart enough to realize what you intended and makes the appropriate spelling correction. What's the date on which the clinical evidence of this pneumonia first appeared? And if we go back and look at this history, it was on May 25th, almost 10 days ago, uh, when uh, the first shaking chills occurred and uh, she had nausea and some headache and myalgias. So it's likely that that was uh, the beginning of the pneumonitis. Now we're asked if there are any other infections uh, from which, for which we've not obtained culture specimens. And Although there was a slight clouding of one sinus, I think we'll ignore that for now and, and say that really it's the lung and the CSF that has this word. Is she currently receiving therapy with any antimicrobial agent? No, she's not. During the present illness, has uh, she been treated with an antimicrobial agent which is no longer being administered? And no, to 
or not she's not gotten any antibiotics. This, of course, could be important because partially treated meningitis cases uh, have different implications and different interpretation of CSF findings than those uh, for patients who have received no antibiotics at all. Has the patient